Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is now April, which means that it's about to be testing season. So a lot of students are preparing for AP English tests or even the ACT and the SAT. And so it can be really challenging to prepare for these tests because the reading sections especially are very long and involved sometimes and you feel like you have zero time to actually answer the questions. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some basic tips that can help you prepare for the reading portions of these exams and as the video progresses, the testing tips get a little bit more specific to AP Lang and AP Lit. So if you're in those classes, I recommend that you watch the video in its entirety to get the most use out of it. Um, but I will say a quick disclaimer though, just because I'm sure someone's going to say, oh, these tips don't work for me. Basically, these are general tips that have worked for some students, and so it's important that you decide what works best for you. And to do this, I highly recommend taking multiple practice tests in order to practice these strategies in a, shall we say, like safe environment where it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to experiment rather than the actual day of the test. So to do this, you can buy a test prep book. You can also go on Khan Academy. There's other online resources, but I would practice these skills first to see what works works for you. That way you can know more about yourself as a test taker and hopefully be as successful as possible on the actual day of the exam. The first piece of advice is not to linger on tough questions. So if you're stuck between two answer choices or you read the question and you have zero clue what it's talking about, you need to make your best guess and move on. Don't spend three, four, or five minutes trying to get the perfect answer because it's one question. So proportionately, you need to not waste time on a single question. Just choose an answer and move on. The next tip is not to second guess yourself. Now this goes with not wasting time on difficult questions. A lot of times students can narrow it down to two choices and then they get stuck. So go with your gut and don't change it because a lot of times students are wrong when they actually go back and change their answers. Another tip is for students to evenly divide their time. So figure out how many questions there are and how much time you have, and then you can figure out how much time you have per passage. So for the AP Lang exam, it averages out to 15 minutes per passage, whereas the SAT, it's more like 13 minutes per passage. On the AP Lang test, there is not the same number of questions per passage like on the ACT and the SAT. They, those tend to be much more even. So the AP Lang test can be a bit tricky because students will see that a passage might have eight questions and they'll think, oh, this is going to take me no time at all. But in actuality, it's quite a dense passage and the questions are a lot harder. So it actually eats up the clock a lot more than you realize. Whereas a passage with 15 questions might seem longer, but the questions are easier to answer. So what I recommend students do is to actually get a watch because the clocks in testing rooms sometimes don't work. And it can't be a smart watch, but I would time yourself for 15 minutes, check your watch regularly because you don't want to be trying to negotiate time. So what happens if you say, I'm only going to spend 15 minutes per passage and you only get to question 13 out of 15? It's really tempting to be like, oh, I'll just spend a little bit extra time on this passage. Don't do that because students who do that tend to not finish the test and you actually miss out on say five to 10 questions instead of just two. So guess and move on. And if there is time at the end, you can go back to solve those questions with the due diligence that you need, but don't try to compromise your time. Currently, for the AP English exams, as well as the ACT and the SAT, there is no penalty for guessing. You are rewarded for the questions that you answer correctly, as opposed to receiving a point deduction for something that you answer incorrectly. Therefore, it is actually in your best interest as a test taker to answer every question, even if it's just a guess. Another thing that you should think about is what we call being an active test taker, and this means marking on your exam. So cross out wrong answers, not just the letter, but cross through the entire answer choice. That way you stop looking at it and wasting time because you're reading something that you've already eliminated. It probably goes without saying that the passages on standardized tests are super boring. So you're not reading for entertainment. You're not trying to absorb every word and enjoy it. You need to learn to speed read. And so part of this is a skill called skimming. You don't read every single word. You need to read in order to just get the gist of the passage. Next tip is if you're pressed for time, read the first and last paragraph of a passage just to get the gist of it. Now, I don't recommend doing this every single time because it really is a strategy that only works for some students. However, it is something really cool to practice. If you find you're struggling, it could help you. But again, this is not something that I recommend for everyone. 
This next tip is one that is rather controversial in my classroom because I have some students who need to read the whole passage first and then answer the questions and they score higher, whereas other students of mine need to read the questions first and bracket off questions like when it says in paragraph one, they'll bracket it off and they'll put like the number of the question and that actually helps them with their scores. So you need to figure out which one applies to you. And then there's like this third group of students who like do it both ways and they get the same score regardless. So there's that. But basically you need to think about how how you want to approach the test. Because remember, you're doing this for a score. You're not doing this for entertainment. So figure out which way works best for you. Okay, so it's important to realize that there are not patterns on the test, at least not intentional ones. So don't try to spell words like bad or dad and don't try to make diagonals. It's okay if you choose the answer D four separate times all in a row because the answers are done individually. Each question needs to be viewed in isolation. So don't try to make patterns. And also remember that it's urban myth that the answer is C or that it's the most common. So don't necessarily choose C. If anything, if you're running out of time, don't try to make like patterns as you're guessing. Let's say for some reason you have 10 questions left. Don't try to make a pattern. Just choose one letter answer choice all the way down. So go with A or D, whatever your letter of the day is, and answer D all the way down if you're actually not able to to spend the time you need on those questions because the second that you try to make patterns, you actually reduce your likelihood of getting it right. So say you have 10 questions left and you have two minutes, just bubble in one letter, the same letter all the way down. Next tip applies more readily to AP English exams, but it's important to omit extra words actually an AP Lang release question. So it says the author's overall attitude can best be described as. So with attitude, we're looking for tone. So get rid of the adverbs in this case, like grudgingly or clearly, and just look at appreciative and non-judgmental because those are words that you can understand. And so the minute that you omit the extra words, it actually becomes easier. Now, what I did here is I put little negative signs. So one of them has two. That word is more negative. So it has a harsher connotation. So if you know that the author's attitude is negative, then cross out answer choices that have positive connotations as you're crossing out the extra words. And this will help you simplify the answer choices and it makes it a whole lot less confusing. So if you know it's a negative attitude and you're stuck with two answer choices, then figure out is it very severe or is it mildly negative and look at the connotations of those words same strategy can be applied to pronoun and antecedent questions. So in this case, we're just isolating the nouns because it makes it a little bit easier to understand. So again, you're just crossing out extra words so that you can narrow your focus and better understand the question in hopes of getting the answer correct. A balanced question is when you have like this word yet this word and so both words have to be correct in order for the answer to be correct so don't try to rationalize wrong words if you know that one side of it is wrong cross it out it's not the right answer so this is actually not a release question it's just something that i made up inspired by release questions just so you can see the idea here so we have a shift from abrasive to accepting so if there's no acceptance in the passage, then cross out that answer. Basically, you need to figure out one side of them. So look at one side of the words. Look at words that you're familiar with. And if that does not apply to the passage, the answer is wrong. So whether it's like this and this, if the first word is totally wrong, doesn't fit, cross out the entire answer. Keep it as simple as possible and don't fall for these types of answer traps. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you because I know that it can be really intimidating to take the reading portion or the multiple choice section of any of these exams. So my best advice is to practice often and that way you can apply these strategies confidently on the day of the exam. So if you guys like this kind of content or found it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on your notifications, and until next time, happy writing.